All right, let's talk about clinical depression and severe anxiety. Um, anxiety can come in many ways. Like mine is much in tune with like OCD. Obsessive compulsive disorder is basically an anxiety disorder. It's categorized in that. But just like the feeling of being anxious in general. Like these two things, it, it'll really increase the chances of you abusing a substance, right? Um, obviously, there's many more factors in this. But depression and anxiety definitely contributed to mine, and I'm aware of that. Um, I was never like, I don't know, there was a point where I was severely depressed, but it's been a long time. It was like over a decade ago, and I was working third shift, and I remember I would get off at like 8 a.m. I can't stand third shift, by the way. That was depressing in general, but I would get off at 8 a.m., come home, and there were times if I was off the next night, I could sleep from like 9 a.m. all the way past midnight that night. All the way. Sometimes I can't even remember. It's been so long, but all the way into like the next morning, almost like 18 to 24 hours straight, I would lay in bed. And it was just really bad depression at that point. And I remember this and I, I dug out of that, but I remember those times. And it, it was rough. You just want to lay in bed. You just want to sleep. You just don't want to do anything. You know, I was going through some hardships. Financially, I had nothing. Um, That was tough. I've been there, and I know it's very hard to get out of that. It's very hard. Um, You have to construct positive and healthy habits to elevate yourself out of it. Like I always say, the gym and physical fitness really elevates my mental state okay i i to this day i believe i have slight depression it's not severe it's managed like if i miss a day of working out i'll feel it in my mood you know what i mean i'm always anxious i'm not gonna say i'm extreme i'm like sort of mild to average on the spectrum of these things but I have experienced severe anxiety and depression, but it's not really that bad now. People that have panic attacks from anxiety, that's a whole other level. I've never really had that to where, like, I couldn't function and I was, like, you know, breathing heavily and not being able to talk. So I can't really relate to that extent, but I've always had social anxiety. Like, public speaking has always bothered me. And alcohol has sort of dulled that anxiety down. And it, it helped me cope. It's like self-medicating, right? You're, you're self-medicating, but the next day it makes it worse. The next year it makes it worse. The next... It doesn't really help. It's temporary relief, right? And I always knew that. You know, if you're feeling down and depressed, alcohol will give you a bit of euphoria. Some then, a lot of the times, if you're in a bad mental state, alcohol... At the end of the night, when you're blasted, it'll make things way worse, like way worse. You're going into it trying to get relief, and you end up way worse than you were at the beginning, right? <clears throat> but to remedy these things, you have to you have to get up and go. Like for me, it was working labor and getting decent paychecks, building a foundation financially. Um, and I've been in and out of the rut. I've been, I've gotten out and went right back in through like toxic relationships, you know, being laid off certain things do it. And the more, the more I've went through it in the past, like 15 years, the, the better I am at being resilient to it. Right. Like when you're young, it, it's devastating going through a breakup, um, losing your job, not having the finances, not being on your feet. It's it's devastating. I remember just really having nothing. And it's it's a soul-crushing place to be. 
And I, I will make sure I do everything in my power to never go back. But I've been there, <clears throat> so it's just I'm older now, right? But uh, some people never get out of that rut, man. But your best bets now, if you have mental illness that is literally <clears throat> with you, you you may need to seek like SSRIs, antipsychotics, you know, the list goes on. You may need medication to help you. It all depends on your brain chemistry. Not everyone can just go to the gym or work a job and like get their finances straight and then they're happy. If you really have a severe mental imbalance, <clears throat> you may need medical medical treatment, like medication of some sorts. That's a whole other topic. But a lot of people are normal and they have anxiety and depression. And and that's where I'm speaking from. If you're like bipolar or have like a mood disability, something like that where your mood swings are severe, you, you're gonna need medication. The gym isn't gonna isn't gonna fix this, okay? There's there's a chemical imbalance in, in the brain and that needs addressed elsewhere. But as far as natural the gym will increase your serotonin and dopamine receptors. Um, you'll feel good. You'll be in that flow state. I never finish a workout and regret it. I always love it. I'm consistent with it. You have to be consistent. Don't do it half-assed. Don't do it for a week and stop. A lot of people lack the discipline and the willpower. A lot of people. They make excuses. Oh, I don't have time, but they're watching reality television for two hours a night. I don't have time, but they're sleeping 10, 12, hour day, 12 hours into the morning every weekend. I don't have time. I don't want to hear the excuses. I work 10-hour days. I work out in the mornings before I go in. I did the same thing in the oil field when I was working 15 to 24 hours. I still made time to work out, and I lived at my job. So when people make excuses, they seem pathetic to me and I'm I'm sorry to sound arrogant it's just confidence because I've done it I've literally worked 8 a.m to 2 a.m the next day slept for three hours worked out went in and did it again now that's not I'm not saying that's healthy but like I had no time to myself in the oil field a lot of weeks and I still managed to do it so Cut your sleep back if you're sleeping obnoxious amounts of time. Get up earlier. Cut out the trash TV. Cut out the video games. I love video games. I do. But anyone that knows me now, physical fitness and finances come first. I will make sure I work out before I game. I'll make sure I go and get my stuff done before I game. I wasn't always like that when I was younger. I could play World of Warcraft as a teenager when I was 18, 19, 12, 15, 20 hours a day. I can't do that anymore. Number one, it's degenerate, and two, I don't, I, I don't have the attention span I used to, unfortunately. And if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s playing games 12-hour days, and you're not making money live streaming or whatever, if you're not making a sustainable income, you gotta really, you got to really think about your life choices. Because I know people that can't even afford a $60 game release, and they're $70 now. And to me, if you're a grown adult and you can't afford $70, you need to really assess your life situation. No offense, it's just... a it's just the truth. I know a lot of people that are broke and I don't feel bad for them because they waste their money on non-assets and they blow their money on alcohol, nicotine, marijuana, grocery store, uh, fast food and convenience stores. They're overpaying. That's on them. I'm not, I don't have a, anything against any of these things, but when you're broke and you're doing it, you have to moderate. Okay. But now I'm going off on a tangent again. You have to build a foundation Physically, finance, financially, and that will help ease your depression. I don't think I'm ever going to be as happy as a normal person. I think I, I'll, I'll always have slight depression, but I know how to manage it. Same with anxiety. I still hate large social encounters. Like I'm going through a leadership training program for my job, and we have to act out rules and talk in front of like 30 people. I hate it. I can feel my anxiety go through the roof. But when I do it and I participate, I feel relieved afterwards. I know if I put myself in that situation nonstop for like a few weeks, I would probably get over it. But it's so uncomfortable to me, I avoid it. I'll probably be that way till I'm dead. I hate public speaking and I hate interacting with large groups. I just I don't like it. It's odd to say because I have videos online that have 200, 300,000 hits, views. So I'm exposed to like 
an absorbent amount of people, but it's not live per se. Or on Twitch, I'm live, right? But I'm in the comfort of my own home. They're not all looking at me, and I can see their expressions on their faces, and you know the eye contact. It's a whole different story. I I envy people that can stand in front of crowds or people that can do stand up comedy, play an instrument. Could I do it? I'm sure I could. Do I want to do it? Not particularly, because it is very bad for me. My anxiety peaks at such a level, like my heart rate, my face flushes red, I block up talking, I can't talk right. I remember memorizing entire speeches in high school, and I would lock up halfway through. And it was just like, mental freeze, man, anxiety is paralyzing, it's what it is. But there are ways to battle that too. I should put myself in the more uncomfortable situations. Putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, being more confident with your body structure, your financial structure, it'll build confidence in you. Like since I've lost weight and have a foundation with my body, I'm very comfortable with my body now. I wasn't comfortable with my body at 300 pounds. I wasn't comfortable with myself with $7 to my name or being in debt. I hated it. And when I dug out of this stuff, it made life a lot easier. I don't I still don't particularly like my job. My job can be a pain in my ass some days. But it it it's good money and I'm not going to give up. You know, there's days where you know and if if I do go to another job, I have a resume, I have a lot of labor skills, forklift, Valtech, um food industry. Like I got I have experience. Like I'll be good wherever I work. It's just it's nice being a leader at my current job. It's good for my resume. I've never really been a lead or supervisor anywhere, and it's it's a good opportunity, and i got to stick it out. It, sometimes there's a lot of bull crap, but this is neither here nor there. But since I've gotten sober, a lot of good things have happened. I lost more weight. I've gotten substantial raises. I have a very amazing relationship with my girlfriend. I don't have alcohol hindering that. Um, a lot of good things have happened. I've amassed assets and collections because I, I'm not drinking. I'm not wasting time. I'm working. I'm making some ad revenue. I'm working overtime. So like every aspect of my life has gotten better. There's still things I need to work on anger management. Um, that's the biggest thing when I'm, when I'm anger and like me not judging but getting triggered over laziness and like low IQ people like people that are low vibration and have no lust for life no motivation i get so angry but the thing is why am i wasting my energy on people that don't care about themselves that's something i need to work on and i need to just let it be passive and not care cuz i just don't deal well with it and like in life if i could just work from home and not deal with people i'd be fine but i'm at work i'm seeing people that are just blasted drunk every night coming in they don't shower they don't have the work ethic they don't have a brain and it's like it triggers me because i'm trying so hard to just advance 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 and these people are just stuck and they're older than me they're just stuck and they hate life and i don't hate life sometimes i do when i'm at work that's work though but when i'm at home this is my sanctuary, man. I have what I want, and I, I get what I want. I don't have exotic cars or a, a mansion, but I do very well for myself, especially in comparison to people around me. And I just, low vibration, laziness, and low IQ, I just get so triggered, and I shouldn't. And I also, I know people's potential, and when they don't do anything about it, it bothers me. And I'm telling you right now, if you go and lose weight, if you quit nicotine, quit drinking, if you build a foundation financially, if you do all these things and you see people make excuses around you when you've done it, you'll take offense to it. It's like, I did it. I busted my ass. I did it. I came from nothing. I did it. I have the stories, I have the repertoire, I have the resume. And when people are just chirping, making excuses, or just talking, I can't stand, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And then a year later, I'm going to do it, and they never do it. They're just talking. They're not implementing anything. They're not taking action. If you're just talking about it, you're not acting on it. you got to just do it. It's just a, it's the most cliche freaking sayings in the world are, the, are so true. 
Actions speak louder than words. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Become the motivation you seek and, you know, express it to the world. It's that simple. Don't talk about it. I can't stand people that chirp all day. I never could. But now that I have, I've done these things, I can't stand the people that just talk even that much more. Oh, I'm going to go to the gym. They never go. Oh, I'm going to try to start up a side business. They never do. I'm, I want to have assets. They never do anything about it. I just, I don't know. It's something I struggle with. And now I'm like rambling off, but that's, those are the things that, that help me. And knowing I have people that have rooted against me and I know they're watching. I, your haters are going to be the, the people that look at you the most, trust me. And the fact that I just throw it all out there with my sobriety, my weight loss, my assets, my collections, failure fuels me. And like when people that doubted me see that they eat their own words, I relish in that. It might not be the most positive trait on earth, but I love it. I love the people that called me fat are now overweight looking, looking at me be fit, knowing that I, they're like, wow, he's doing an insane diet. He's structured a diet. I basically have self-taught knowledge of, in dietitian and nutrition. I can tell you, I can tell your average person how to lose the weight and put the muscle on. Like I've done the research, I've done it. It's not really that hard. And now I'm just rambling, but I love that the people that call me fat see me fit. The people that said I'd be broke see me amass more than your average person could think of. Um, they doubt you. Oh, you can't. You, you know, you can't work. And in the oil field, I work more in a week than they have in two. I currently work fifty hours a week in metal fabrication, and I'm basically a, a supervisor on the floor. I became a, a mini boss. I'm not top tier boss, but if I get there, I get there. If not, whatever. I'm I'm doing fine. And it it, it eats these people's hearts out. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to just lay there and take the beatings, man. You want to get up and make them eat their words. You want to make them sit there and go, wow, what is he doing? What? You want their jaw to drop, okay? And if they're not looking, who cares? If they're looking, they're going to see it. And if they're not looking and they come back and take a peek in a year or two or three, they're going to basically shit their pants. That's how the mindset you have to have. And not every day is going to be easy for you. There are days I wake up, I don't want to do it, but I still do it. There are days you're exhausted. You're going to have to rest. You know, you're going to have to rest. It catches up with me. Sometimes I'll get four or five hours of sleep for multiple days. I'll still work out, not wanting to, and then it'll catch me, and I, you got to rest. It's not healthy doing that. You should get seven hours of sleep a night. Sleep's another thing I struggle with. It's been a little better recently, but I think caffeine has to do with that. And this video is getting way too long. But build a foundation of posit positive things and healthy things, okay? Um, that will ease these things the most. Even your anxiety. Like, getting fit will really front run your confidence. Um, saving some money. Owning some things you admire that you're happy to have collection wise or whatever it is obtain things make some goals that'll help your depression it'll ease it i'm not saying it'll completely go away you know and it's hard you'll get stuck in the rut you'll always want more you'll always have that slight envy about the person who has more than you there's always someone who has more than you unless you're jeff bezos or elon musk or a Saudi oil tycoon that's not even on the financial registry that's worth a trillion dollars. You're never going to outdo them. There's always going to be someone more fit. It's always someone better and always someone worse. Okay? There's a quote I read, and this is how I'm going to end the video. I used to always want new shoes until I met a man with no feet. And I weekly I think about this. Why am I complaining about my life when there's people starving? There's people binging drugs, living homeless in the winter and summer. There are people living in huts in third world countries. There are people that are quadriplegics, paraplegics. They're missing legs and arms, living their life fuller than people that have everything. Because they deal with what life, you know, the cards they're dealt. 
or there's people that are locked up for 20, 30 years, which is unfathomable. There's people that have been wrongfully locked up for 10, 20 years. Can you imagine that? And we're here complaining. If you have a roof over your head, a pillow to lay your head on, and you have food in your fridge, like, why are you complaining? You know what I mean? Yeah, you may not have a mansion and a Lambo. You may never have that. You can still be happier than the person that does. Not everyone who has all that stuff is happy, bro. And that's just the truth. To me, when I see people on Instagram flaunting, to me, they, they just, they don't impress me. I know behind that smile, there's, there's a brain that's not happy. Some of them very well may be. I hope they have that figured out, and that's awesome they got money. I'm not going to say money's going to cure your depression, but it definitely helps you out in life. You need food, things you want, can help you vacation. People that say money's bullshit, they're just floating their ego because they're broke, all right? And then the rich people that say money's not everything are just trying to dull down the fact they have all this money. You need money to survive. You need money to get by. And it can buy things that that can soothe your your lifestyle, okay? It's not everything. If you become a multimillionaire overnight, it's not going to cure all your issues. But it would definitely help out in life. Like, people need to stop dogging on money or glamorizing it or destruct, like deconstructing it because it is essential, unfortunately. And to deny that, you don't want to say, you don't want to be comfortable with being broke forever just because money's the root of all evil and crap like that. Like, don't don't feed me that crap. Only broke people are going around saying that kind of stuff. And the rich people are saying that money's not everything. When there's, they have mansions and guards, it's always the people that are anti-gun that have security with weapons, all right? It's always the people with the mansion saying, you know, how, like, they're always, like, counterintuitive with things. The broke people saying money ain't crap. The rich people saying money ain't crap. Like, they're both sort of wrong, man. But anyways, this video turned into a rant, and I apologize. But there's a lot of bullshit in this world, and you got, you got to filter through it because there's a lot of positivity. And a lot of what you're going to see is negative, 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 and it's going to bring your mindset down it's going to cause depression and increase your anxiety and you got to learn to deal with it in healthy ways not coping mechanisms because it's just going to drive you down further it is a good world out there you just got to look in the right places media is not the place to look aggression violence negativity creates clicks creates ad revenue They'll switch titles on things. They'll misconstrue things to get revenue, to get money. And all this stuff is going to increase your anxiety, make you more depressed, and it's going to mess you up. Seeing people on Instagram that are less than 1% of the population that have trust funds out on yachts in mansions, it's not your average person. Your average person's living day to day, man. And people are so focused on this bullshit, thinking they should have it. Why am I not good enough when... It's people that were handed things, okay? Or if they grind it from the bottom and have it, good for them. I respect that. I don't respect people that are handed money. They're full. They're, they're fools to me. Whatever. If I was handed money through a trust fund, I'd be the same way. I probably wouldn't have half the character I do. I probably would blow the money like the, most of the trust fund babies do. But <clears throat> it's not reality, you know? You have these girls making multi-million dollars every year. More than probably tens of millions off of off of really low ego driven incels that have no lust for life other than to give money to a girl that's not going to pay attention to them. And it's sad and it's depressing. And not every girl's going to start an OnlyFans and become rich. There's girls that are local to me out here in bumfuck suburbia that run OnlyFans. They probably make 20 bucks a, a month and they think they're hot shit. It's pathetic. Like, get a, get a job. These people wouldn't have existed in 1980, 1990. All these streamers and crap. Well, they would have existed because you have to be resilient and you have to find a pathway. You, you know, if there wasn't the internet, they'd be working. It's that simple. But all this easy money, ad revenue, grabbing and just flaunting and all these suckers just giving money out. It's just pathetic. And these people just, it's not natural, number one. And two, a lot of these people just 
would not be as wealthy as they are if it wasn't for the internet. That's just the truth. And I can't hate. They're taking advantage of it. I get it. It's just depressing. There's that. There's tens of millions of just really degenerate human beings out there that are just sitting around doing nothing and just looking to fill a void. And, and that's giving money to a girl that doesn't care about them online. That's a whole other part of social media that I can't stand. It aggravates me. I've never once given a penny to a streamer or a cam girl. Ever. Ever. I just never understood it. But this is the end of my rant. This video is way too long. And I'm sure people are going to click out of it five minutes through, which is okay. Um, we might as well make it 30 minutes since we're already this far in. Um... But yeah, media, social media, it's all going to bring you down. Why don't I have that? Why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? Why is the world so bad? Why is it so negative? For every negative event, there's a positive event. But the positive events don't generate the revenue or the uproar that the negative events do. So you're seeing a microscope zoom in on all the negative aspects in society, okay? It's not really like that. Like, you can go on to police activity and see people running around with knives in their hand, going crazy, doing drugs, shooting at cops, dying on camera. It ain't. Ha it's not happening everywhere. It's in certain cities across millions and millions of people and, you know, thousands of cities, okay? So, like... People are exposed to this stuff, and they think, oh my gosh, this stuff's happening everywhere. This is mass chaos. It's basically a microscope version of some of the worst things that are going on. It does happen. People are losing their shit. People are going crazy. But it's microscoped in. There hasn't been a shooting in my local town in years. Okay, it happens. There are robberies. There's shootings in even the suburbs. The cities are much worse, I'm sure. And you know what? When you go to like Philly, Kensington, Pittsburgh, Compton, you go to these rough cities, yeah, you're going to have this stuff all the time. I get that. But like everybody's scared. No matter where you're at in the U.S., everybody's just scared to live. And it's like this stuff's not happening everywhere as like a blanket thing, you know? I won't deny it. There are some rough places. There are crimes and murders every day. But I know people that are out here and bum fuck, and they're scared. And it's like... You got to live your life, man. But this video is way too long. I apologize for rambling. But yeah, get positive structure. Physically, financially, build a foundation, and it will ease the depression and anxiety. If you're not comfortable with your body, change it. If you're not comfortable with your financial status, change it. Just in a year, you can drastically change your life. This video is way too long. I... I'm going to post it, but it's ridiculous. I should I should keep these below 12 minutes. That's going to be a trend from now on. And hopefully my no noise gate is all right. Apologize.